Yeah. All right, let's check in with Lizzie, who's got a very special guest. Brian, more women are binge drinking, according to the latest report on women's health by the National Women's Law Center. And now there is a new dietary trend that's being called drunkorexia. It's becoming very popular among college students, but some people are dismissing this order. Johnny Ness is eating disorder therapist at the Summit Eating Disorders and Outreach Program, Jennifer Lombardi. Thank you, Jennifer, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So just to be clear right out of the gate, it's not a medical term. Basically, you were kind of describing it as two disorders kind of merging together. Is that what this is? That's correct. It's not its own diagnosis, but what we consider that to be is sort of a merging between an eating disorder and some sort of substance abuse or even full-blown alcoholism. So how is it manifesting? What are women, because that's who this primarily affects, what are they doing when they have drunk orexia? So typically when we see this onset is when young women go to college. And so to a typical college experience, there's a lot of pressure to fit in and to feel comfortable from a social standpoint. So oftentimes you have young women who, knowing that they're going to be going to a party or to a bar on the weekend, become very conscious about the number of calories that they're going to be consuming through the alcohol. So they'll try to engage in some sort of compensatory behavior in preparation for that. And so what we typically see are behaviors like restricting or over-exercising in order to quote unquote save the calories to be able to drink them. Okay, now I, I can remember, I'm, even though it's now a, a distant memory, being, being in college and you do go out a lot and mm -hmm. and for some there's a lot of drinking how is it different between you know from now and then I think part of the difference is, is our in our culture we mm -hmm. certainly have become increasingly more prominent and focused on weight and appearance and we see that in younger younger age groups I mean I'm assessing clients as young as seven and eight years old now so they've had a lot of years being in in sort of our culture and, and sort of focusing on weight and appearance and so by the time they go away to college between the pressure of that and the pressure to fit in and to feel that they're part of a good social network you, it's sort of a you know a ticking time bomb so to speak I was just gonna say I think now more than ever there are so many shows, uh, reality shows in particular, that just basically glorify being out drinking right, and, right. and, and being thin. Right, and, and, and certainly more shows that are focusing on eating disorders, which in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, certainly we want people to be aware. I was just going to ask you, there is a, a show, I believe E did it, yes. on... on it's called What's Eating You. Yes. Yeah. What is your What is your been your reaction to that? Because it's very it's pretty tough graphic to watch. Very graphic. Pretty graphic. Yeah. I think my concern with shows like that is they have a tendency to sort of glorify. It's kind of like the accident on the side of the freeway. Everybody sort of wants to slow down and have some sort of morbid fascination or curiosity with it, um, and that isn't helpful. I think certainly people lose sight of the fact that eating disorders have the highest death rate of any mental illness, and so they need to be taken extremely seriously. So when you think of an eating disorder alone as being that serious and that dangerous and then you factor on top of that people who are abusing alcohol um, it's it's you know it's a recipe for disaster what would you do I know we're, we're in the, that holiday season and there's gonna be a lot of eating and a lot of drinking um, and, and you see somebody who might have signs what, what would you advise well we always tell you know when I get phone calls from family members and loved ones and they uh, especially this time of year when kids are coming home from college um, and going to be involved in family meals certainly meals are part of our our celebration of the holidays but they can absolutely mean something very different to somebody with an eating disorder and so oftentimes what I tell them to do is to educate themselves mm -hmm. number one and to understand what eating disorders are to understand what treatment resources might be available in their area and then come prepared to be able to talk to your loved one very open and directly um, not to be afraid not to shy away from the conversation and really explain to them what behaviors they're seeing why they're scared and why they at least want them to be evaluated by a, by a professional all right Jennifer Lombardi thank you for joining us to talk about a, a very serious and frightening problem thanks